Good morning, friends. Welcome this morning to Salem United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Suzanne Jones. Welcome to worship this morning on the Sunday, April 19th. Um, it is a pleasure to welcome you here in the sanctuary on this Easter tide. You see, we have our altar ready to celebrate. Christ has risen, and Christ is risen, and Christ comes today in this moment to be with us. I want to begin with a few notes before we begin with our worship this morning. First and foremost, welcome. We're so happy that you can be here. Secondly, I want to encourage you to be patient and have an attitude of patience. If the internet connection is a little slow or maybe your bandwidth is not catching up, uh, have patience it will catch up, I promise you. Or you can always catch the replay. We certainly want to know that you are worshiping with us today, so make sure that you type in here in the comments below, if you can, or if you're watching this in the replay, type replay. And let us know that you gave us a view. Hit the like button, give us some hearts, give us some smiley faces, whatever you'd like to do to be interactive and to engage with us in our video this morning. It gives me lots of joy when I see things like that. Um, also, be sure to share your prayer request with us as well. We want to be in prayer for you. You can do so by sending me either a private message here on Facebook, or you can email me or the office directly. So be sure to visit our webpage at salemcommunity.org, and you can find that information there. Well, with that, friends, no matter where you are today, no matter how you are viewing us, we are together for the good of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you, right? Right? We can hear that before. But the peace of the Lord be with you, and may the Lord shine upon us this morning as we bring our hearts to God to worship. So let us indeed begin our worship. Good morning, everyone. Please join me in the call to worship. Christ is alive. Christ our Lord is risen. He, he is has risen, risen indeed. indeed. The grave could not contain him. The news cannot be hidden. We will, we will worship, worship with, with you, joy, joy thanksgiving, thanksgiving, and, and praise. praise. Come, let us worship the risen Lord. Please join us in the opening hymn, Lift high the cross on the United Methodist Hymnal 159.
please join me in a prayer. Loving God, long ago faithful disciples proclaimed the good news of Jesus' resurrection and the world was changed forever. Teach us to keep faith with them that our witness may be as bold, our love as deep, and our faith as true. In the name of our risen Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. In our scripture, it's Psalm 16. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the hand, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other goods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take up the name on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to realm of the dead, nor will I let your faithful one see decay. You will make known to me the path of life. You will fulfill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Thank you, Jeff. Well, this morning we also have a scripture reading from the Gospel of John, John 20, 19 through 31. And in this piece, Jesus appears to his disciples, and it's been after the resurrection. So hear these words. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples, they were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, John also recaptures uh, Jesus when he appears to Thomas. It goes like this. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to Jesus, My Lord, my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. 
And then John goes on to tell us the purpose of why he wrote this gospel. And he recorded it. He said, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. Can you imagine? What else is there to tell? But, John says, these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, would you join me in prayer? Let us pray. Oh, gracious and holy Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of the word that you have given us for this day. And we thank you for the word that became flesh and dwells in us, among us, and is with us wherever we are, even today. Help us to take this word and write it upon our hearts. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to pull this down just a little bit. There we go. I'm still adjusting with angles here because I want us to look at this beautiful altar as our hearts point to it. And I want to thank uh, Lori and Rick Bishop for their work in transforming uh, this sanctuary for us into our Easter tide. It is truly a celebration and it screams decolores for me. So thank you so much. Uh, we're so happy that we're able to be able to provide this kind of sanctuary for your viewership at home. It hopefully makes you feel like you're here and makes you feel like you are uh, present with us. Well, friends, as I mentioned, of course, and everybody has mentioned so far, we celebrated Easter last week, the Resurrection Savior. And our scripture is today is calling us into faith, to live into an Easter faith. That's what we're talking about today. And at the heart of the Easter story, of course, is Jesus' resurrection. But there are many of us, though, that wrestle with this idea of resurrection. We wrestle with what it means for us. Many of us approach the scriptures and say, can someone actually be risen? Or maybe you approach the scriptures and say, darn tootin' somebody can be risen. It's Jesus. God can do anything. But I'm here to say it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to ask questions about what resurrection means, because let's face it, we're still trying to figure out what resurrection means for each of us. It is okay to be like Thomas and to experience doubt. Now we have made the, heard the phrase before that it's too good to be true. And I have an idea that maybe Thomas could have said that if he knew that phrase. Yeah, Jesus is risen. Oh, it's too good to be true. Because let's face it, when it's too good to be true, how does the phrase go? By experience, we know if it's too good to be true, then it probably is. So something's up with that. But here's the thing. Doubt is a natural thing. It's a natural human element. In fact, it's part of our makeup. The word of faith and the word for doubt come from the same Greek root. So it's as if they're part of the same coin. If to say that you can't have one without the other. In order to have faith, you have to have a little bit of a doubt in there too. Reverend Marianne McGibbon Dana says that if your faith doesn't have a little doubt mixed in with it, it's not faith. It's certainty. And it's hazardous to be certain of yourself when it comes to God. It is hazardous to be certain that you know everything there is about God of the universe. I think with that, that's a dangerous statement because if we're certain about God, that is just asking for trouble. Frederick Buchner says, and this is one of my favorite quotes, whether your faith 
is that there is a God or that there is not a God. If you doubt and have any doubts, you are either kidding yourself or not. He says, doubt are the ants in the pants of faith. They keep it awake and keep it moving. So if you experience doubt, that gives you this sensation like, oh, there's something not right here. Such an interesting concept that Frederick Buechner comes to mind. We wrestle so much with doubt that sometimes we let doubt hinder us rather than propel us in our Christian walk. Some people feel guilty for having doubts and they remain stuck in their patterns. You know, I was actually one of those people. I had doubted some things and I felt guilty about that. It's not that other people made me feel guilty. I personally felt guilty. But then someone wise once told me that I should doubt my doubts and to not let my doubt rule my life. So friends, I'm here to tell you, don't let your doubts rule your life. Snap out of it, as Cher says in Moonstruck. It's okay to loosen the grip on certainty. I mean, as Jesus says later in the text, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. If you need to be certain about all the things that are going to happen in life, then how does that leave for any room for God to work? If we were closed by certainty, how can we be surprised by God? It's amazing what God can do when we loosen the grip a bit, when we let go and let God, yet we continue to doubt. And guess what? That's okay. God is okay with our doubt. But be encouraged to have faith in your doubt. We can have faith that in asking questions, we will find what we need. My systematics professor, who is a wise teacher, her name is Dr. Beverly Mitchell at Wesley Theological Seminary. And she says that the questions we ask may not lead to great certainty, but they do lead us to better, more life-giving questions. We can find hope in that. If you're feeling like Thomas today and doubting the resurrection is true, doubting whether life really wins over death, doubting if we're ever going to go out in public again, and if you doubt whether God really loves you or not, or even if there is a God, may I tell you, there is hope for us all. The good news is there is new life available to each of us if we open our hearts and open our eyes and allow God to stir in us. When we release the reins, oh, it releases the freedom. God loves you so much that God made a way. Each day is a new day to start anew. We can lift high the cross and sing of God's love poured out through God's son, Jesus Christ. Because renewal is happening. God provided a way for renewal to be experienced. That brings me joy. Do you believe that God is working in your life? Do you believe that God is making all things new? That God is renewing life through creation? That God is renewing us through the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Because let's face it, we're facing a resurrection every single day. And the question is not if renewal is happening around you, but how renewal is happening. 
Do you have eyes? Do you have heart? The eyes to see, the heart to see, God's presence moving in and among your life right now. I invite you this week to take time and look for how God is moving in your life. What is God doing? Does it make you mad? Does it make you happy? Do you feel God's presence and God's comfort? May you have eyes to see and hearts able to exclaim, my Lord and my God. And all of God's people say, amen. Well, friends, let us offer this time a time of prayer for each one of us. I will lead us in a prayer and I will invite you to speak aloud your prayers that you would like to offer to God right now in your midst. You can either do it verbally or whatever is on your heart. God hears us. So let us join together and pray. Would you pray with me? Creator God, we confess that at times we are skeptics. That at times we doubt that you exist because of all the evil that we have seen in this world and all that we have experienced. Oppression, marginalization, hurt, hate. It plagues our world, Lord, and it's very hard to see. It's so hard to see your love and your light. And sometimes even those who bear your name do not walk in your ways. Help us to see, Lord. Help us to see in the struggle. Help us to see your goodness in this world and help us to know your love. Fill us with your love and your goodness so that we might love one another and lift one another up in faith. Lord, many circumstances and situations have occurred, and though we have no clue what they point to, we put our hope, our faith, our trust in you. And Lord, right now we lift up the names and situations which are on our hearts at this moment as we give them to you in a moment of silence. As people of faith, we know you hear our prayers, Lord. United together, we come together and speak the prayer that your son Jesus taught his disciples to pray. In the words that we learned it, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, now is a time for us to surrender a portion of what God has so graciously given back to us. Now, we give our offering not because we have to, but because we get to. We get to share what God has given so graciously to us and give it back. And I want to thank you for the ways that you have been giving, that you have been powering and making Christ visible in this world through your offerings. 
Now, I invite you to uh, offer up any offering that you may. Uh, if you so wish, please uh, send your offering to us via snail mail. We are not set up quite yet to take offering via the internet or electronically, but you can, however, contact your bank and see if you can get an automatic deposit put through. Um, but also, uh, you can mail us your offering if you so desire. You can mail it to Salem United Methodist Church, P.O. Box, 25, Keedysville, Maryland, 21756. It would put up a little graphic here. I don't know how to do that stuff. Also, if I wrote it on a piece of paper, it would come to you backwards because I'm doing the front camera. So I'm learning how I'm going here. But regardless, I want to thank you for giving what you can to the Lord and know that your offering reaches so much. It provides the, the resources to fuel mission and ministry, not only here at the local level and for our church and for our community, but around the world too. We are able to help those who are in so desperate need of help right now. So I encourage you to give and give generously and thank you for the ways that you are sacrificing for the Lord. While we are offering our prayers and offering our uh, tithes and gifts, we will listen to a special uh, music from Diane Ludden. <laughs> Please join me in the offertory. Father, through these extraordinary times, you have taught us to remove the noise, the frustration, the selfishness, and the behavior. You have taught us to love one another. You've taught us without the noise, there is nothing but peace. You've taught us to give and to help others. And that's what we're doing here today. You have taught us so much during these extraordinary times to love one another. And we do this together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, this morning we will finish our worship service with our closing hymn, Easter Peace. People, raise your voices. I hope you can raise your voice at home because I'm raising my voice here in the sanctuary. I believe Jeff is too. And uh, I think Diane will as well, if we're lucky, right? <laughs> well, God bless you. Let us sing together. Easter people, raise your voices.
excited to hear the organ trumpets. Well, friends, I want to thank you for joining us for worship today. It's been wonderful to gather in this way with you again. And I'm so thankful for your flexibility and your availability as we navigate this time together. Um, I want you to uh, be aware that our church and our, excuse me, our bishop had a phone call the other day of the state of the church, and that is, information is available on our website for you to witness and look at. Um, our bishop has gone along with the local govern, govern officials and saying our churches will continue to remain closed uh, for, um, uh, through May 15th. That's, I believe that's the date. Yes, it's a Friday. Um, so please be aware of that. We are going to continue to be on this platform and giving our worship. Um, but look to your emails. And if you have not signed up for our MailChimp, at, you can do so at our website. And we can get you on that newsletter. So that way you can be up to date with any announcements that are made. As well as we can send you a copy of the bulletin that you can follow along with worship. So uh, we're working with the technology that we have and the availability that we have. We're not like the bigger churches that have a lot of resources available, but we do what we can to bring our praises and to be with our God. So uh, again, we are going to continue to be meeting on this platform uh, for about another month. So that's okay. God's still with us. Amen. God is good Amen. all the time, right? Amen. Amen. That's all I got to say about that. Well, I want to thank you for joining us this morning. And as we shelter in place, let us receive the benediction. May you shelter in place and may you also be sheltered in peace. May the peace and comfort of the risen Christ be present with you now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, friends. Bye-bye. We'll see you next time.